and officially good evening everyone i hope you're doing doing great and you enjoyed your day so far so if you don't mind let's start together if the voice is clear and everything is fine please type one thank you awesome thank you all i appreciate hey there clay rachel okay so before i start uh let me just show you a few things um for the course that we have i provided some announcements and um, um thanks to one of our team members who asked me reza um give us even appropriate not exact exact um kind of deadline I can say um, these due days are almost accurate. Um, I don't want to rush, rush. So sometimes it happens that we cannot cover the content in this week. So there is a chance that we postpone it to the next week, but it's not going to be like, for instance, one month's difference or something maximum. It's going to be one week later if that happens. I don't think that happens, but and this is just in case. And I was lazy, I just copy and paste. And for the final project, I didn't modify the November 24th to December 1st. Then today I just realized that, oh, oh I made that mistake. So I fixed it and I sent an announcement on Telegram. So this is just to let you know what is happening. Um, so I think that, um, and if I show you, um, it's funny, I found that people, let's just click here. Yeah, you can see that. Even um, we see that some people, <laughs> um, at least one person was like that. I announced the um, announcement, uh, the assignment today, and they finished it by tomorrow and they sent me the whole thing. Um, and you see already we have four people. Um, and people told me that uh, it's, it's not very much time consuming. And even if we are kind of, new in python and we need to do some research um it's not going to take maximum one day so you have enough time to go through the materials the other thing that i want to mention is and i'm going to tell you um again at least two weeks in advance that for midterm and final uh, we need to come to the college in person on monday so these two days except these two days that we need to be in the college in person, the rest would continue as online as you see. So uh, the, the place, the room number, everything, uh, I'm gonna let you know at least two weeks in advance. And uh, the midterm would be right after the, the reading week, uh, means the reading week is week number eight, if I'm not mistaken. So just after that one week, the, the college is closed. Um, uh, it's gonna be um, October, 13th on uh, monday october 13th so we are going to just i mean have our midterm then let me just see if there is any question any is the midterm on paper or online um it's going to be on paper it's going to be at school it's going to be on paper the same as what we had for um the concept would be um, the same as the midterm and final that we had for uh, Python, if you remember. Okay. Yes, definitely. And um, yes, it's going to be on Monday. And people have um, their own concerns that, for instance, I'm in the first group and um, people in the second group, they may hear about the thing. So it's not fair that I, I'm in the first group while the others are in the second. So um, that is why we are going to have all the participants um, in one, uh, at one time and in one place. That's why. Okay. So, um, and the final would be in week 14, the last one. And um, lecture days yeah i mentioned that's going to be on monday so i repeat it again and i'm going to announce it on uh, 
at least two places. One is on the course uh, webpage, um, definitely at least two weeks in advance, um, and the other places on our Telegram group. So don't worry about it. I just it's even more than one month. Um, that we have over one over a month that uh, uh, for for the midterm. So it's going to be the same thing. Okay, is is everything is fine? If everything is fine, please type two this time. Okay, merci. Hi, Peter, how are you doing? Hey there, Anas. Kiddos, William. Okay. Maharshi. Okay, nice. Harlan. I remember Harlan. Divine. Okay, awesome. Um, the, the other thing that I want to... Um, uh, share with you um uh actually is the quiz as always we have quiz today i even opened it earlier but i hope that you haven't opened it um although you know the material we just quickly go through them but i just want to um make sure that we review it and then with full confidence that we are aware of the content then we are going to open the quiz so for quiz you have today and tomorrow uh, I'll, until tomorrow night. Um, did I mention six minutes or time limitations? I have to check. Wait a second. <laughs> I always have these kind of stresses, guys. That uh, Did I set the time for it? Did I do that? Did I do it? It's a little bit different than the, the current environment. Let me just see timing. Yes. So everything is fine. Um, the other thing um, is uh, let's let's just everybody um, make sure that you can open your book on page 42. If you can do that, please type four. And I'm going to review this stuff. You're awesome. Thank you. Merci. Okay. Did I end the questions? Did I record the session? That's another stress. Oh yeah, I started recording, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is recording. How do you know that it is recording? Um, divine is there any kind of things that shows at your end because here i have to open we get a message lovely awesome so the thing is um this is a kind of nice um a sentence it says that data manipulation in python is nearly synonymous with numpy array manipulations um huh and uh, so we started working with attributes of arrays indexing of arrays and then slicing so we were just around this topic that we finished the time um in the previous session so reshaping we didn't that much talk about this and joining and splitting of arrays and i provided um screenshots and um, um paint just to um, let you know and if you don't mind guys i'm gonna ask you questions to make sure that everybody everybody um who participates in um, today's class will get full mark from the um, quiz. So um, let's read this sentence together. It says that um, NumPy's random number generator, which we will uh, see with a set value in order to ensure that the same random arrays are generated each time this code is run. So sometimes you want to, um, for, for the reason that, for instance, you want to see where the error is and you want to make sure that um, the code works properly. So you don't want to every time get different random numbers. Um, that is why you use seed, right? And then um, that's one of the scenarios. The other scenario is um, we have a class of uh, 100 something, some uh, students, and then we want to make sure that everybody get the same graph, right? And they do the things uh, properly and similarly. So we use seed zero. So if I want to ask you what we need to set to make all random no numbers unified, what is the command for it? 
Could you please type that? What do we use to make sure that all the random numbers are unified? Excellent. Excellent. Lovely. You got it. So seed is the one that we are searching for, right? Um, and the other thing is, imagine that we generate um, X3, um, which has um, three plates, three, three tables, and then four rows and five columns, right? So um, can you tell me what is the what is the output of NDIM? What is the output? Just guess. Don't worry. Um, the wrong answer is the one that we never try, right? Number of dimensions. So what is, what is it for this one? Can anybody tell? Yeah. Lovely. It is three because we have, yes, we have three dimensions. That's the number. Of, and what is the shape for it? The shape says, hey, we have we have what? We have three tables. Each table has four rows and five columns. Is it is it correct? So if I want to know the size of each dimension, guys, this is this is important. The size of if I want to know the size of each dimension, what is the command that I'm gonna use? Is it endem? Is it size? Is it what? Matthew, bravo. Guys, I repeat the question. Please just, um, anybody um, who is volunteer to just pick the mic and read this sentence, I would be thankful. Just say who is volunteer by typing one and, uh, and open your mic then. Okay, uh, um, Alvaro, can you please open your mic? Hello. Thank you. Hello, um, can you please read that sentence? Each array has attributes and them the number of dimensions, shape, size of each dimension, and size, the total size of the array. Okay, so my question is, if I want to know the size of each dimension, what is the proper command for it? Uh, Based on size. Or the, oh, shape, yeah. Okay, guys, this is a tricky one, I know, I know. So, uh, everybody, Again, I say the size of each dimension, what is the proper command for it? Please type. Okay, lovely. So I'm confident that people are not gonna get to a trouble, lovely. And look at this one. Um, the other question that I have for you, if I want to know the overall, uh, the, the every item size, right? For instance, we are talking about an array of integers and uh, that integer is int 64. So 64 divided by eight, 64 bits divided by eight gives us eight byte, right? So item size shows the place that we need for every single element in an array. I repeat it. The item size shows the size of every element in the whole array, huh? But the overall size, the overall size of the array is with what command? Can anybody tell? Lovely, lovely. Honestly, now I am, I'm not sure about one of the questions. Did I ask this question or something? But I know that I had some, some alternatives. I said, well, I'm going to ask this question and that question. So, um, that's why I emphasize on a few things here. Then we started talking about the indexing. We said if we have an array, an array that has one dimension, we call them vector. And uh, we can simply get to this kind of things. But if we want to, to index from the end of the array, we use what? Negative indexes, right? So if we say, um, negative one, let me just see. Yeah, thank you, Lucas. If we say negative one, it starts from this side. So negative one, negative two, negative three, four, five, and six. So five can be achieved by either saying x one zero or X1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, right? 
And the other thing is, um, yeah, is it possible that um, we change the value of, for instance, the this array? Like instead of three, we say, please um, change it to 12. As you see, it is possible. And yeah, and it's going to change it to this one. Guys, if everything is um, super clear and you have no issue, please give me the first high five. Merci, Oli and Peter. Wow, lots of high fives. Anand, how are you? Daniel, <laughs> wow, nice. Holland, it's, I'm fine, thanks for asking. Okay, so, Mayor, thank you. So, um, you know that if I say change this into change index, uh, where is it? Change, change the value that we had in X1, which was five, change it to what? 3.14. It doesn't change it and it kind of round it. Anybody can tell why? Hmm. Carl said wrong data type. Um, it's integer. Actually, you completed each other because they're trying to sort. Yeah, right. Look, um, guys, um, if I want to summarize all your um, kind participation, uh, it would be, as you see originally, the type that we have here, the type that we have here, right, Mikita, Ivan, Matthew, is uh, integer. So already the the um, data type is 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 is, is uh, designated for for this array and it is integer. So you cannot say, "Oh, I changed my mind." So let's change the array to something different. Huh? It's it's already designated as, and that's why we use array. Otherwise, we could use lists, right? Because we we know what could be the type of every and each single cell in the array. So if you want to bring something like three point something, the typecasting in automatic way happens and it is going to uh, truncate the number into, that's not the greatest, that's not the um, greatest um, thing. It's better that we, we intentionally and we ourselves try to say, whether we want to do rounding or chunk it or something. But if you leave it to um, Python to decide um, for it, it's going to trunk it, which is not the best, right? Because it could be, for instance, 3.61, and it's going to say, hey, you know what? Three. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to uh, say. And now I have slicing, and we talked about it quickly, and we said that, for instance, if you have something like zero to... 10, not including 10, exclusive on the right side. And if you say everything from the beginning all the way to five, not including five, but from five all the way to the end, and it's going to include the last element as well. Um, this one is going to be four, five, six, but for sure not seven. And um, yeah, if we say colon, colon, it means, um, and we say too, the, the last thing would be the steps that we want to have, right? Lovely, Matthew. Lovely. Um, um, and the thing is, my apologies that today, uh, guys, I'm not going to assign just just <laughs> this hour uh, any bonus mark, but tomorrow we have lots of bonus marks because I want to finish um, up to something. And um, what is this one? It says, what is this? I can't understand this one. Anybody can step in and say this one, please. Starting from lovely William, exactly. We we start from one, huh? And uh, every other. So this one we start from the beginning, and th this gives us the uh, even elements, and this one gives us the odd elements. Uh, well, actually, because we have um, sequence, it means that 
the steps of two for both of them, but the first one steps for, uh, starts from the beginning. The second one starts from the first, uh, from index one. Lovely, Ennis, William, awesome, yeah. And um, multidimensional subarrays is something that we wanted to cut one part. For instance, when we say that everything from the beginning all the way to two, not including two, which is going to be zero, one, but not this row. And this one, we say that all the things like zero, one, two, but not three. So it's going to be just this, these six numbers. And as you see here, but what if I say uh, for X2 um, that everything all the way to, to uh, the end, why don't you say three means zero, one, two, but not three. We don't have three means all the rows. That's not the best. We could just leave it like colon. But here, if you say colon, colon two, I, I think that this is just, I mean, for the educational purpose. Otherwise, we just say colon here. We don't need to mention that, right? Um, and this one says, hey, all the all the columns, but in the step of two. So it's going to be the first one and the not the second, the third one. And um, so that is why you see we have 12 and we have 12, 7, 1, and we have 2, 8, 7. It was almost the last thing that we wanted to, we, we talked, but this one, I uh, switched it into two parts to say that it's going to flip. If you remember, we, we worked on it like yeah, we um, worked on it uh, in two steps to, to assure that um, we understand everything from there. Um, I think one mic is open. I hear my reflection of voice. Uh, if your mic is open, um, would you please just take care of it? Thank you. Okay. And Sanjay, I guess your mic is open too. I can mute you. Okay, don't worry. Uh, so from from this moment and from this point, I to accelerate our yeah. You see that here. I said let's first um, say reverse the rows and don't touch the columns. So um, the the overall things was 12, 5, 2, 4, and so on. So you see that 12 goes to the last, uh, this one and this one. So we just reverse that one. And if you reverse both, it's going to be like a total mirror um, in, in diagonally, right? So uh, one of the things that we sometimes we need to um, do is accessing... Um, one part and that is that is the other question that i want you to think and answer uh we we just had a few seconds last session to talk about but this is an important concept so the fact is one important fact is um array slicing is uh if you if you just use array slicing it's more like a view of the original um, array. It's not copied to the to a separate space in the memory, right? So um, I want you, everybody, just this sentence from here to here. I know that that sounds kind of funny, but I want you, please paraphrase this in your own words, and I'm going to just read a few of them for everyone. Lucas, bravo. Carl, awesome. Hmm. So, um, 
So technically, when we say it's a view, it means that we use the same location in the memory, right? Can we say that whenever we? Hmm. Lovely. So by saying that, awesome. Um, that is why that when you say, for instance, let's have a subsidiary of that and take um, the first um, two rows and two columns. And uh, if you just print, it's going to be just this. And if you say that, hey, let's change the index zero uh, in, in terms of rows and columns, means this one, and change it to 99. You change it in the subsidiary that you already, but if you check the original one, you see that, uh oh it's already changed. It means what? It means that this is just a view, not a copy. So if you, if you grab the, the difference uh, between copy and uh, view, uh, please type for, <clears throat> And if you have any hesitation, please type zero. Okay. Um, so apparently only Reza has problem. Okay, let me just tell, look, whenever I say X is something like this, okay, and I, cut one part like the first two rows and first two columns. Is it clear so far that this X2 sub contains these four elements? Huh? If I say, um, so those friends that they said uh, zero, can you please just confirm if if this is clear up to everything so far. So I just cop, I just said these two, let's consider it as X2 sub. Can you confirm that this is clear? Okay. If you say you are going to change just this 12 into 99, zero and zero means that this part, it's not going to change in in something in x2 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 sub is just a camera to a part of the original data set so when you change something in this subset it changed the original as well which contains everything okay so you're asking a subset array um the parent array Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, Lucas, very well said. Um, and let me just see. But when um, you make a change to the subset of array, it affects the parent array. Yes. But you have all the right to say, what if I want to have a copy of it? Simply, you use you you say that dot copy. Huh. Yeah, it's literally, as Anand said, um, bravo, lovely. So yeah, if you say copy means that, hey, get those elements and put them in the in a separate, so you have a backup somewhere else, right? Um, you have a copy, it's like you have you have a backup key, right? You have, you have a backup things somewhere else in the memory. And if you change right now, after you say that, hey, this is by copy, and that's just a name, you can call it Reza. It's not a keyword that's because I said X2 sub copy, it, it has any changes. The whole change happens because of this dot copy here. And if you change that 99 into 42, for example, it's going to change the copy, which is somewhere else in the memory, and it's not going to impact the original. The original stay intact. So if everything, everything is super clear for now, please give me the second high five. Look at this lovely class. Awesome. Excellent.
Yeah, Al Gore. Hey, how are you? Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Let me ask you one quick question. Um, compared to the, um, just this is uh, because I want to start reshaping. I just want uh, to see your opinion. For the lectures that we have many people, I have some concerns um, when we have actual classes. Um, partially it's because because of the characteristics of the instructor, right? So I tried to anal analyze it for myself that why it works better for me when the lecture classes are online and when lab classes are in person. Um, actually, I requested to have that one hour online instead of having um, class because people can easily participate like this. Um, if anybody comes five minutes later, 10 minutes later, it's not going to distract the whole class. And there are lots of benefits. We can participate actively and we can use every single second of that. That is why I want to talk to Maziar and change the um, uh, format of... Uh, so we have Python format that we had it in the previous um, semester that we had to come um, to... Um, lectures in person, but we have this one. If you think that this type that we have this semester means data science format um, is better, please type A, B, C, D, D data science, data science format. If you think that Python format the previous semester is better, please type P means that coming to lecture um in person like what we had so d for so python mm -hmm. okay okay um Ali, just just to give you good feeling, not to be surrounded by many Ds, uh, I support you. Don't worry. So we can have in person sessions together. Okay, but I'm gonna now. I have a confidence to talk with Maziar and go with the feedback that I received from the students. And thank you very much. What is <laughs> divine? Okay, okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna just reflect. Um, uh, just just to let you know, uh, we um, this is our, our intention to make the whole package as pleasant as possible to have a kind of atmosphere that we can learn and have progress. Uh, what is the meaning of reshaping? I have forgotten. Anybody can tell without looking at reshaping. Please. Um, yeah, the question is, what is the meaning of reshaping in arrays? And is it important to use? Okay, let me just quickly tell you. Imagine that, imagine that, um, where are you? Lovely, going from Lucas. Yeah. Um, awesome, yeah. That's beautiful. I cannot find my. Okay. Apparently, I have no other option instead of closing it and then reopen it. Okay. Now, look at this one, please. Do you remember that we talked about um, 
a 28 by 28 MNIST data set. So the 28 by 28 MNIST data set is something like that. So 28 here and 28 here, 28 rows and 28 columns. But if you want to use it and bring it to deep learning, you have to bring them all in one column, which is going to be, so it's nothing but a column. It's going to be something like one column, okay? And it's going to be 784. We are gonna use this one in the next semester a lot. Um, that's something that we start um, um, our examples with. So the thing is we have to consider that if there is a potential for it, for instance, imagine that you have nine different elements like what we have here. If you say that I want to have an array range of between one to 10, including one, excluding 10, it's gonna be nine elements. How many, how many possibilities do we have? Can anybody tell? We can have an array of one row, nine columns. That's that's something that came to my mind. What else? Okay, Lucas, if we have two rows and uh, five columns, two multiply five, it's going to be 10. While... Um, how many elements do we have in in this array? That that's a very good point that Lucas mentioned. Um, because we have nine elements here, we can either have one row with nine columns, or we can have um, one column but nine rows. Or as Matthew said, we can have a shape of three by three. So you got the point, right? Oh, don't worry. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to have as, as a kind of example that um, is not possible in reshape. And we see that where reshape can help us, right? So imagine that you have 10 elements, then you have more options. For instance, as Lucas said, we can have two multiply five or five multiply two or one, 10, 10, one, and a lot more, right? So we can have, yeah, yeah, true. That's exactly. So, um, and, and look at this one. It says that the size of the initial array must match the size of reshaped array. And that is the question that they asked you. And let's just get back to um, this environment. I don't want to miss anything. I uh, just want to make sure that we copied everything, uh, we covered everything, everything. So that is the reshaping. And um, uh, you, you will have this, guys. I assure you that you're going to have all these um, uh, files before the midterm. That is our review time. So uh, we have, for instance, MPRA that has one, two, three. Look at this one. It says that this, this guy that has... I don't see any difference between these two. Anyone can say, what is the difference between these two? I don't think that we have any difference. Debunk me and say that Reza, no, there's a difference. And what is that? When reshaping does each row have to have the same amount of columns? Lovely. Yeah, Matthew, I second you. Uh, I repeat my question. These two, Reza says, um, these two are identical and debunk me please say that if they are identical or not and what is the difference between them one hint pay attention to number of brackets that we have shade up carl said one is one dimensional and the second Lovely. Wow. Huh. Um, Prakash said not identical. Correct. Lucas said 2D versus 1D. Lovely. There. Okay. Lovely. Um, okay. Um, but what I learned from you, let me just tell and correct me if I'm saying nonsense. Um, the first one, uh, because it has just one uh, brackets and we we said it. it's it's a vector it's just numbers right 
But the second one, we shape it to one row and three columns. Am I right? So technically, vector is something that we have just one series of numbers, one dimension. But the second one has rows and columns. So it is two dimensions. And that's why we can just see two brackets. And guys, whenever I say bracket, I mean that kind of bracket, right? A square bracket. But um, I know that people are inter interchangeably uh, call parentheses brackets as well. So whenever Reza says bracket, it's like this. Um, so is it possible that I can change it to three rows and one column? Yes, as you see here, it shows beautifully that we have now three rows and one column. Um, just let me get a feedback from you guys. If everything is super clear, please give me the third high five. Merci. I hope that it's not rush rush and you can follow everything so far. Wow, lovely. Okay, beautiful. Um, there is one thing. There is one thing. Actually, I learned that and I mentioned it. The uh, student, the the team member that helped us to have a better. Um, and I mentioned his name somewhere. <laughs> Because that's that's a copyright. The way that he explained it, I said, "Wow, that's that's nice." You can find his name somewhere. Um, yeah, whenever we say new um, axis, a new axis, yeah, it means that one means that we have one row. So whenever you have that. Um, okay, um, Anand, can you please pronounce it for me? I had hesitation. It's new access, right? X, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, whenever we have just one, um, one, you can just, instead of that, say mp.newaxis. It means that let's have one row and three columns. And the other one is if you say, all the column, all the rows, and just one column. Instead of one, you can just use this one. Is it is it clear? So just instead of saying one, you can say a new dimension. In here, you emphasize on having just one row. In here, you emphasize on having one column. If this one is clear and see the example, I pause here to make sure that everybody can understand that then please type one. Okay. There is one thing, guys, um, uh, correct me, true, false. This is uh, this is a matrix that has two dimensions. True, false. Lovely. Wow. Everybody is. Yeah. Um, Luca said one dimension matrix, which we call it vector, right? So when we have vectors, there is no row, no column. So the only way that you can concatenate these two is like in a row, right? So that is why you don't say that, hey, um, use this axis or x axis or that one. Uh, you just say concatenate these two, for example, right? And it's going to be one, two, three, and then the next one, three, two, one, and they're going to just be in one row because there's no other option. We don't have any dimension. Huh? Um, and if you add another one and you say that, hey, concatenate x, y, and z, z, and they're going to just suddenly make it like this one, correct? But what if we have something like a grid, a matrix that has two rows and um, three columns as we have in here? So it's similar to in JSON, uh, uh, JS. Yes, yes, correct. Good. Yeah, so um, I'm happy that you didn't ask anything about PHP because 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's let's go to this one to the grid. Um, so we have two rows and three columns here. Is it possible that we say, hey, put them uh, wall to wall? Uh, do you do you see my hands like this one? Or to put one on top of each other. Is it possible? Yes or no? Do we have options when it is matrix? S yes. and as it doesn't count. It's very diplomatic. Why not? Say yes or no. What 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 pause us not to put them like this or like this? Because we have dimensions. Well, yeah, we have dimensions, right? Okay, let me just give you the answer. Uh, if Prakash said yes, awesome, yes. Uh, remember, in in um, vectors, we don't have dimensions. We don't have rows and columns. We have just numbers in a row. So we can't think about, okay, stack them or something, but we have now two dimensions. It's fine. We can. <laughs> now that's a good point, Matthew. So, but default is when you say that hey, I concatenate them. The default is axis equal to zero, and don't worry. Tomorrow, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I'm gonna explain everything, everything. Uh, not to get confused, especially in pandas part. We are going to see there are tons of places that we need to say x is equal to zero, x is equal to one. But just imagine that um, these are these are the rows that if you compress them all, they're going to just be one row. And row means x is equal to zero. So they are going to be on top of each other, right? These rows are going to be on top of each other. But if you say x is, is equal to one, and you see that the default is x is equal to zero. Whether you say it or not, they're going to just stack them kind of thing. Um, and um, if we can imagine, uh, we can make it true, right? Um, and I have some pictures I'm going to bring it to. But look at this one. Here when we say x is equal to one, it's going to be co column by column, I mean, wall to wall. So we have that one, two, three, four, five, six here. Do you see these three elements? And then we have another one, wall to wall, in a kind of vertically, they are uh, side by side. Does that make sense? Huh? Uh, in, in this specific example, we have the ability to put them on top of each other or in vertical form, wall to wall near each other. But in some cases, for instance, we don't have any option for, for this one. I was thinking maybe Python doesn't have compile time uh, macros, but <laughs> totally does. I'm gonna talk about some some specific features tomorrow, and you're gonna love uh, Python for that. Look at this. Um, can you imagine that we can? Let me just bring this one, and um, the, these are the last thing that we are going to talk. And tomorrow we are gonna continue with the split uh, splitting of arrays. But let me um, show you one thing. Um, if I just um, take these these three numbers and uh, put them here, super small, and um, this one here, and put it here as well. Is it possible that we say, okay, you know what? Let's just have them in a vertical uh, form like this. Yes or no, guys? Is it possible? Yes. If you could illustrate zero. 
Okay. Uh, those who think that it is possible, let me just ask you, how about this part? What do we have for this part? We don't have anything, right? So that is why it says that, mm, you know what? They are not in the same size. But is it possible? Is it a good match if I bring this one on top of this? Is it going to accept it? Yes or no? Aha. Uh -huh. Lovely. So for this one, we call it V stack. So vertically, vertically stack them. And that is what you see here. So I just wanted to say why we use V stack here. But imagine that for the other one, let me just, um, so guys, is it is it 100% clear? Yes. If yes, please type 100. Reza, <laughs> why? Wow. Look at this class. Lovely, lovely. Um, awesome. Merci. And for this one, guys, do you think that for this one, is it possible that I put it on top of this or I need to put it something like this on the, on the what do we call it? Horizontally, yes, you got it. You got it. So we cannot put it on top vertically. We cannot pile up vertically. We can just put it horizontally, right? On the side. Enes, Al Gore, William, Lucas, Alan. I'm confused on use case. Um, can you give a different example? Okay. Imagine that, imagine that um we have a data set. Um that that's a very good question. A data set that we already considered. Guys, Harlan asked that. Reza, is it possible to talk about the use cases for that? We want to define a data set that predicts and predicts if tomorrow is going to rain or not. Um, is it clear uh, up to this point, Harlan? If yes, please type one. Lovely. So I considered the temperature. I considered the um uh, the the um, the air pressure and i considered imagine that 10 different factors and the prediction is not that much great then i realized that oh uh oh i should add the cloud type as the 11th um uh, column so i want to add them uh, as you see i want to etch stack them to all the samples that i have so 10 um, now you have to look at my hand so we have 10 elements like that. And we are going to add one more element, but it's going to be another column, 11th column. Is it is it clear so far? A exactly. Appending one column is going to be um, like H stack. But let me ask you one thing. Imagine that I want to, I want to um, get a kind of analysis um, uh, statistics based on the classes that I have. I go to section uh, one, for example, and I see some um, some some patterns um, among, for instance, the students' participation uh, during the different um, uh, section and uh, the, the diff different sessions in the semester. But then I I see that it's not very much generalized. I want to add another class, all the other rows to have a solid data set which contains all three classes that I have. Then I'm going to, for that one, I'm gonna stack them. So class one, the um, uh, class number two and class number three. So uh, I'm going, going to have a consolidate data set containing three different classes. I use VStack over there. I don't change the columns. I just add more samples. So that is why I use VStack. Is it clear, uh, Harlan? It's going to vertically or horizontally. Lovely. Uh, I thought that uh, Harlan wanted to know more about the scenario, so that I came up with these two immediate examples. But what Lucas said, I, I second you, Lucas. So adding to whether data set would be um, um, horizontally adding one column, um, right? We add one column, right? Walt. Just, and uh, look, you don't need to worry about this one very much. I, what, the way that I re remember this is this one. And guys, I, I promise to finish very soon. What is, what is, 
this is anything but nail um do you do you feel that that okay awesome one year later okay i found it um guys what is this one it's a nail right am i right uh harlan okay and look at this one it, isn't it isn't it something like like i'm not saying it is exactly but isn't it resembling something like v here Always remember, if you want to stack them uh, like this, it's going to be like a V, stack them, right? And um, horizontal, it's going to be something like that. It's like, I mean, you have a bed, guys, H, it's like, I mean, a person is sleeping here. So it's going to be hands, legs, right? So it's going to be horizontal, wall to wall. That's how I remember these two not to get confused. Did I answer your question, Harlan? Um, sorry, just uh, what I'm getting confused by is like, I'm just thinking of that weather data set. So say the 2D array that's underneath the nail right now is like temperature. And then we want to add atmospheric pressure to like a column to the side of it. So that would be like, I would call like the H stack to get that second column beside it. Um, exactly. Do you see this example? So 99 and 99, this column that we added here, this is just one column. Do you see that? Yeah. This, this is added by H stack horizontally added like a bit horizontal. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if we wanted to add like a whole new temperature to the temperature column, we would do a V stack. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I got you. Thank you. If you want to have one complete row, adding four rows, not columns, you are going to use a V stack like that, right? Awesome. Good, good question. And uh, guys, look at the time. Uh, it's sharp five. And tomorrow we are going to continue with the splitting. Just please do not forget to um, answer the quiz Um you have tonight and tomorrow if everything is fine give me the last high five and have a wonderful one lovely take care of yourself ciao bye